yeah, any of the walking wounded likely to be back and available for the uh, the game against Reds? I think it's going to be touch and go. Um, a lot of the a lot of the players have have, have been in and they've been um, doing their rehab. Um, we've got a real small group that's going to be training today, um, and then tomorrow we'll do something that's. Um, that's very very light and then we'll be having to sort of readjust and make sure that we we get the right squad that travels up knowing that everybody's fit so yeah we're a little bit down to bare bones and um, we've got a few of the younger boys that have come up that will be training with us today and and maybe surprising and seeing maybe one or two in the squad on Saturday so yeah it's it's still touch and go at the moment but it's um, yeah we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, it's always nice when you can get some of the youngsters involved, and I'm sure that'd be something that'd be memorable for them. But for for a lot of the, the players, how easy is it going to be to motivate them? Because you sort of look at the situation in the table, and, and it's looking like you're relatively safe. And and given everything that's happened over the last month, you get that initial sort of surge of uh, uh, you know trying to do the right thing, and then after a while, you it's sort of you still got those processes those um, emotions to it to process but um, you've, you've got to go through the grind of playing you know Monday Saturday Monday you know it, it, that's got to be tough very much so and um, I think even today with you know me sort of coming in and and doing the press the, the, the manager's been a little bit flat we had two really good you know really good performances and two good wins and then um, for us then to, to come up short um, in the game on Monday we was very very flat after that, and it was it was such a quick um, week where, of course, we had Lee's funeral, which was a real big psychological step for the players to you know try and put stuff behind them. But it's still in the forefront of all of our minds, and you know we can all we can keep doing is making sure that we we, we turn up every day. We we we, we any time that we're feeling down. You know, we're encouraged to, to share our feelings with members of staff and each other and you know we're going to have them ups and downs and, and the one thing that we have got to do especially with the, the manager and with the players is to make sure that we're not flat and we've, we've got our energy for the match days because you know we've still got to make sure that we're, we're pushing, uh, we're playing for our supporters that are watching every week and that are right behind us and, and putting in good performances for them and that's that's the forefront uh, of our mind to make sure, you know, that that we keep working. We're doing a, you know, a hard days, hard days graph for a hard days pay, and to make sure that we we are putting in performances and and, and you know that there is a feel good factor around the football club as best as we can do in the current circumstances. Yeah, that sort of hard working vibe is certainly something that you've had from from playing into to management and coaching. But is there any part of you that that says, you know, what just sack this season off, or, or is there a benefit to playing these games, either footballing wise or or just mentally for for you and some of the other the players? Yeah, well, listen, the group we've got and with the manager and and, and with the football club, um, we don't sack nothing off. Uh, we need to make sure that we go in there and put a performance in. Um, our supporters want to see, you know, hard work, determination character they want to see us defending well and they want to see us going forward and scoring goals and you know that's what that that's what we're holding on to at the moment to make sure that every day we're giving our best because first of all it's what Lee would have wanted and second of all you know we we're, we're fighting for ourselves our families and there's a lot of people that's out of contract and um, we need to make sure that we're fighting for our futures as well so um, we're still bang on it we're still right up for it and with this group and with the manager and the way that the football club works at Yeovil, you know, the, we would never sack nothing off. No, absolutely. And uh, interesting, your take on this is obviously as a former centre back yourself, but you know, there've been such issues with getting a, a balanced and a, a set side out there in terms of a, a back four or a back five. And you know, you, you've had Albie Skendy there in, in recent weeks in the uh, centre back, and Charlie Lee's had to sort of slot in there. How difficult has it been? defensively for you guys this season just with the sheer number of changes you're having to make week in week out well I think you saw from last year I think with you know I think it was Craig Alcock um, stroke with um, Romeo, Hut uh, Romeo Hutton um, Wilco Collo and Dicko along with um, you know I think we had a, a few changes at, at goalkeeper but with Nelson when you are settled like that we end up in the playoffs and, um, and we had a real strong second half to that season this year because of the injuries and and people like Staunton. Staunton played 40 something games last year and it was you know, really unlucky that he got that injury with Lee Collins um, in and out, uh, Wilkinson as well with the, with the injuries that he's had. 
it's been unheard of to have that many in the back four. I think the only time we've had the two centre-half pairings fit or the back four, which would be our, our best back four, um, I think it's only about seven or eight games in the whole course of the season, which for us isn't good enough to have that consistency in making sure that we keep clean sheets. And, you know, we, we rolled out quite a few last year and we was really, you know, stubborn and... Um, we would go, especially into our away games, and we could really go and grind results out. And our away form this year, we've not been able to do that because of that change of the back four. And we'll have two good results, and then we've had that, you know, where it's always been 2-1, 3-2 away from home. Uh, and you, it always needs to be a zero or one. But if you're conceding twos and threes away from home, you're never going to score four. So for us, it's it's been disappointing. But the thing that we have really held on to has been our home form. I think, um, you know, this year it's been, it has been very good, and it's been something that we, you know, we've been able to hold on to. Yeah. So, uh, so a chance, hopefully, to, to try and improve that away form against a, a Wrexham team who are absolutely in the thick of that sort of playoff fight to, to try and get themselves out of the, the National League. It's going to be another tough afternoon. Yeah, they're, they're six in the league, and um, you know they're pushing on and and. and they're a, they're a good side, they're a big side, they're a strong side. They defend with a back five, um, got a good midfield three, good experience in now with Rutherford and, um, and Young. And, you know, um, Angus is up top and Gold at Omateo is up top, our old player. So for us, it's uh, the game that we played at home. We was, we was quite disappointed because we had loads of chances in that second half that we couldn't quite, um, couldn't quite take and they beat us 1-0. So... And they've been on they've been on a good run of form and you know they're very as I said before very strong very robust and I remember the game we played there away last year it was uh, it was a fantastic game I think it was a draw and um, you know we know what we've got to do but with the injuries that we've got we will be you know going up there a little bit threadbare. And just finally with, with you and everything that sort of the club's gone through this year whether on or off the pitch are you still able to enjoy? The, uh, the role still able to enjoy sort of turning up at, at Hewish Park and getting the training done and everything else as, as much as you ever have? No, I'm not going to lie. I think it's been probably the hardest hardest time throughout my career at Yeovil um, because of what happened and, and, my, and my relationship with Lee and, and, and within the squad. You know, he was the captain of the football club. He was number four. We, we shared the same shirt number, the same sort of roles and responsibilities as a captain. So, no, it's been really hard, if I'm honest with you, to... Um, to come in every day and to make sure that we're, you know, we're upbeat and we're giving that sort of energy to the players. But, you know, if, if nothing, one thing that we do here is that we come up to work, we, we arrive at work and we make sure that we're rocking and rolling. So the players know that they've got a group of staff behind them that is ready to go. You know, all, we're all in. We're all in and we're going to go there. We're going to turn up on, on a Saturday and make sure that we try and get a result. And... You know they need to see that, and they need to feel that, and they need to know that that we're a hundred percent behind them, alongside them, in front of them, and we're leading in the right way as well. But it has been the most difficult period of my career, bar none. Terry, well said, and uh, very best of luck going forward, mate. Cheers, thank you. Hi, Terry. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good. Um, I know we don't normally get this sort of chance to talk to someone else other than Darren so what's it like working with the, the gaffer and just how close the unit is the dressing room yeah I mean you know I've got a dual role within the football club um, the academy manager so sort of oversee um, the youth program that we've got the under 18s along with the the college program and you know with the first team as well every day so yeah work very close with the with the manager in all aspects of of um, first team life uh, I mean we did everything to team selection, training, um, player recruitment, budgets, you name it, I'm sort of lucky enough to be sat in all of those conversations. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's full on. And, and I, I think, as you know, with the manager, when you speak to him, if, if I make any little mistake, he's bang on me and uh, it gives me a little bit of stick. But I know that it comes from um, a place of, you know, love, Sometimes I get tough loves, especially the goalkeeping coach, Craig. Um, but no, we're a really, really tight-knit group and we're really close. Um, as you can see from this office, there's, there's no windows here. It's like a casino. 
you know, so I think this, it's a clever way the gaffer does it, so we don't know what time we arrive and what time we leave. So um, it's a working room, we call it the bunker, and this is where all the, you know, all the hard work, the hours, and because we haven't got a lot of staff here, we have to do everything from, we analyse ourselves, recruitment, uh, as I said, budgets, everything goes through this room. So it's a, it's a full on environment, but it's a good one. And, you know, I do enjoy coming and working with the, with the manager every day.